Hello everyone, welcome to Arita. So in today's session we are going to revise and we are going to revise the economics for phase 2 and paper 2. I hope you people are well prepared and the exam is around the corner. It is only 5 days, 4 days that is left and I know that you people are doing really very hard work and I know that it will pay. Okay, so now uh, hello Nilesh, hello good evening Anuradha, Anupma and Neeraj, good evening and Sebi Maha sale is going on which is uh, Edutab is providing you flat 65% off and you can get Sebi grade A MCQs master course as well as legal MCQs master course okay and this will be very helpful for you in the last few days in the by giving mock tests by doing more and more questions and today also we will do many of the questions and now before starting with the session please subscribe to our youtube channel if you are new to the channel and join our telegram channel where you will get the pdf of this session and many other free sessions okay so good evening everyone and now we are going to start with our first question i hope you people are well prepared and so this is the first question that which of the following is not true for perfect condition so try to give the right answer of this one So the first is price is equal to longer than average cost. Second is market demand curve for a commodity is parallel to x-axis. Third is firms earn normal profits in long run. Fourth is in the long run firms operate at the minimum point of the average cost. And the fifth is none of the above statement is wrong. So I have got the answer from Rishabh and that shows that he is really well prepared. And the, right, the answer is absolutely right. And Nikita and Nilesh are also saying E. Uh, Sonia is also, Vinay is also saying E and you people are absolutely correct and E is the right answer. See, first of all price is equal to long run average cost that is in the long run that is your price is equal to AR is equal to MR okay and price is equal to average cost, average cost okay why price is equal to average cost because in the long run you only earn normal profits so your AR should be equal to AR should be equal to average cost for the normal profits. For the normal profits, your AR should be equal to AC. Okay, and here price is equal to AR and that's why in the long run you are earning normal profits. Market demand curve for a commodity is horizontal to the parallel to the x-axis. In the long run, firms operate at the minimum point of average cost. So it is also a very uh, important point to remember about the perfect competition that in the long run you are at the minimum point of the average cost curve. Okay, where the MC? MC cuts the average cost or average variable cost curve at the minimum point. Okay, so here you can see the graph and these are the points. Next question is in front of you. A drop in the price of apples shifts the demand curve for oranges rightward. We can draw the inference that the two goods are what? They are normal goods, they are substitutes, they are inferior goods, complements or none of the above. So try to give the right answer of this one. Very easy, very easy. Once you understand the question, it will become like in seconds you can do this question. Try to give the right answer of this one. Okay, I have started getting the answer and Debajni is saying uh, B. Okay, I am getting the answer B. Try to, try to understand the question further. B is not the right answer. Everyone is saying B. B is not the right answer guys. Try to understand the question further and try to answer the, give the right answer then. Everyone, everyone is saying B and B is not the right answer. A drop in the price of apples. So the price of apples have dropped and what is happening that the demand curve for oranges is shifting rightwards. So when the prices of apple, when the, yes Nilesh has given the right answer and he is saying compliment. Tekken Games is saying compliment and yes, compliment is the right answer. Price of apples decreased. Price of apples decreased and due to that what happened that the at the same price the demand of the oranges, the demand of the oranges increased. Okay, so the price of oranges are same. The price of apples have decreased. And due to which what happened that the demand for oranges increased. Rightward shift in the demand means that the demand is increasing. When the price of the other good is decreasing. And the inverse relationship is of the complementary goods. 
very easy it was okay so the prices have decreased and due to that the demand has increased and the inverse relationship is the relationship shown in the complementary goods and i know that all of you must have known the substitute and complementary thing but now the question made you confused so read the question very carefully okay next question is for an increase in the effective minimum wage to have less of an impact on employment which of the following is correct again very easy put the logic and you will get the answers in seconds okay this kind of application based questions you can see in the exam this is the application based question of a very easy topic of elasticity so try to give the right answer of this one so the demand for labor is relatively inelastic the demand for labor is relatively elastic or the demand for labor is not a derived demand so the question is saying that your minimum wages has increased your wages has increased but employment has not been affected much when the employment has not been affected much mandar is saying a anamrita is saying a shubham is saying a and let me tell you a is the right answer and i am so happy that many of you are giving the right answer see the wages have increased and employment should decrease but because why should a firm give more wages they will reduce the employment they will hire the capital or something so employment should decrease but here what we can see that there is no much impact on the employment that means the demand for labor is relatively inelastic that demand of labor will not shift much it will not be affected much okay and demand for labor is always a derived demand because why will uh, why will a firm demand the laborers because they want the commodity to be produced and so it is a derived demand the demand for labor so here you can see that if the labor demand is elastic employment is sensitive very sensitive to the changes in wages even if a little change even if a little increase in wages there there will be huge decrease in the employment but here you can see the inelastic demand of labor even if the wages have increased so much still the labor cannot be reduced much there will be less impact on the labor and that's why it is inelastic okay next question is a country can have an increased surplus in its balance of trade as a result of which of these okay balance of trade let me tell you very easy question this is the easiest one until now i can say so try to give the right answer of this one declining imports and rising exports higher tariffs imposed by its trading partners and increase in domestic inflation and increase in capital inflow none of the above which should be the right answer of this question that you have to tell okay and i have started getting the right answer and rishab sanath sonia nadeem every one of you are preparing so well and this is the right answer because balance of trade deals with the export and imports and that's why we want decline in imports and rising exports so that we earn more of the foreign currency and we can earn more surplus into our country very good all of you now we can move to the next question which of the following statement is or are true for the current account of a country balance of payment have three balance of payment mostly have current account and the capital account and there then there is errors and omission so you have to tell that which of these statement is true for the current account very easy for you guys i know that you can easily answer this one and try to give the right answer by writing five point whatever the answer is okay so i have started getting the answer but do write five so that i can understand you are giving the right answer of this question again rishab has said um the right answer mahek nilesh anupma well then you guys this is the right answer it shows the net income generated in the foreign trade sector the capital account tells you about the claims and liabilities of financial nature that how much borrowings are there how much investment is there that is your claim that is your liability or your claim but the current account shows you the trade part okay so the current account shows you the trade in goods trade in services or the transfer payments and trade in goods export of goods import of goods trade in services net factor income that is the from the land labor capital and entrepreneurship and net non factor income from the shipping uh, services that you are giving of the shipping services you are giving of traveling and something and transfer payments are the gifts remittances and the grants okay so this comes in the current account next question is the elasticity of demand of a commodity 
will be higher when what of these things happen. So you have to tell that when will the demand elasticity will be higher. Try to give the right answer of this one. Should it be commodity is considered a necessity, more is buyers, demand loyalty, more availability of closed substitutes or no closed substitutes is present. And I am getting the answer from many of you and you are giving right answer, Nilesh, Anamrita, Sonia, Sanat, Nikhil, everyone is giving right answer that is more availability of closed substitutes. See when a commodity is a necessity, it is less elastic because you have to buy it. You have to buy the salt even if the prices are going uh, low. Uh, or high. If the prices are going low, you will not buy too much of the salt because you need it a little only. More is buyer's demand loyalty. If the demand, uh, if the buyer is loyal to you, you are not very afraid of increasing the prices. Okay, because the demand is not very elastic. More availability of close substitutes. When there are many close substitutes, the buyer will, can purchase anything. And so the demand is elastic. So here you can see the nature of the commodity. If it is a necessity, less elastic. Availability of substitutes, more substitutes, more elastic, then you can read that, okay? Give the consumption function this and the investment function is this, then the equation of the IS function will be what? So the consumption equation is given and the investment equation is given and you have to tell that what is the IS function. Let me tell you that IS function tells you about the income. That income is being determined. So how if consumption is given, if investment is given, how can you determine the income? Very easy answer once you understand that how this is related. And let me tell you that IS curve was given by Keynes. So I have given you many of the hints and I hope that now you will be able to answer this question very easily. Do write that seventh and what is the answer? Okay, I have even started getting the answers and that is really nice and yes, this is the right answer. Nilesh, Thrupati and you people, C. Acacia, you people are giving the right answers. Well done. Very easy now that Keynes is the one. Keynes said that the aggregate demand is equal to income. Aggregate demand is C plus I equal to income. So C, you just have to put the equation of C, you just have to put the equation of I and you will get the income that is being determined from the investment. So this shows the IS function that how income is being determined from the investment that how when the, uh, sorry, when the interest rate changes, the investment changes and due to that how income changes. Okay, when the interest rate changes, the investment changes and due to that aggregate demand shifts up or down and due to that the income changes. So this is the what the equation is showing that if we have I equal to whatever and then we can determine the income. Next question is which of the following will be true for both monopoly and monopolistic competition in the short run? Try to give the right answer of this one. If you know the shape of the graph, if you know the graph, you will very easy to answer. Just see the question and you will be able to answer the question if you know the graph of monopoly and monopolistic competition. So try to give the right answer of this one. getting the answer Devajni, Karan, Nilesh, you people are so fast and so right and this is the right answer that is see very easy to understand once you have the graph that is AR upon and the AR will be higher to the MR this is the graph of the monopolistic and monopo monopoly and monopolistic both competitions in which AR is higher than the MR AR means that is the price AR is the price and AR is also the demand curve Okay, it is also the demand curve. AR shows the price, that where the price will be. And of course, you can see that AR will always be higher. The price is greater than the marginal revenue. The AR is greater than the marginal revenue and that's why this is the right answer. Well then you guys, here you can see that the revenue curves under monopoly, it is less elastic because there is no, no close substitutes. So it is less elastic. When you have more close substitutes, that is in the case of monopolistic competition, it is more elastic, more elastic. Okay, next is here now next question, which amongst the following market forms leads to most efficient allocation of resources? You should not even take 10 seconds to answer this question. That much easy this question is. 
Okay, so try to answer this question very fast. Okay, Karan has already given the answer and perfect combination is the right answer. Shubham, Karan, you people are so fast and that is the right answer. Perfect competition is considered a utopian world. It is considered the most efficient allocation of resources because at the price equal to MR, equal to AR and the average cost is at the minimum point. The average cost is at the minimum point and MC is cutting MR, MC is cutting MR from below as well as MC is cutting the AC. So it is considered the most efficient point because the average cost is at the minimum point. So you can understand this. Next is the elements given below are some of the parts of the M4 money supply of Indian economy. Which of these are the part of the M4 uh, money supply? If you know the formula, very easy to answer. Directly you can answer this question. If you know the formula. Okay. So try to answer this one. Should it be broad money? Should it be all deposits with the post office savings bank, national savings certificate? Should it be the combination of three or which of these is under the right M4 money supply? Okay, so which of these should be the right answer? And I have get I have started getting the answer and many of you are saying only A and B and that is the right answer. Okay, so who was the first that one that gave the right answer? It was Sonia. So well done you and C is the right answer. You can see all the formulas and just remember these formulas very easy. Next is which of the following consumption function will the value of income multiplier K is equal to 4. So the value of multiplier is given. You just have to derive the consumption function that from which consumption function the value of this multiplier has come. So which of these consumption function is the right answer. Very easy if you know and 11. Karan has already answered the question. So well then Karan and this is the right answer and I have not given him the PPT beforehand and I have not told him the answers beforehand he is just so fast. So yes this is the right answer because see you have to uh, understand the MPC okay because the formula of K is 1 upon 1 minus MPC and MPC is what? MPC is this. MPC shows the slope of the consumption function and so 0 0.75 minus 1 and it will be the 4. The multiplier, the income multiplier is 4. Okay and the same formula is change in y upon change in i equal to and this is also the formula of the multiplier of the income multiplier of the government multiplier you can say. So this is the right answer that uh, Karan gave. Next question is which of the following is not the correct match. Again a easy question but you have to be very careful with the wordings. So try to give the right answer of this one. Okay, so what should be the right answer? Fiscal deficit, budget deficit, revenue deficit, uh, primary deficit. Which is the wrong formula? Which is the not the correct match? You have to tell that. And twelfth uh, B. Okay. And I am also getting the answer twelfth C. And who? Which answer is right? The twelfth B or C? And the right answer is C. I told you to be very careful with the wordings. C. Revenue deficit is the excess of the revenue expenditure over the revenue receipts. Just simple wordings can confuse you. Okay. So the fiscal deficit, this is the right formula that the excess of total expenditure over total receipts. Just less borrowing. Budget deficit, excess of total expenditure over total receipts. Primary deficit, excess of total expenditure over total receipts. Less borrowings and pay, interest payments. It is just that you are deducting the interest payments from the fiscal deficit and you can come to the primary deficit. So okay next question we can move to which of the following models assumes that one firm recognizes that his rival will take into account the quantity of output it decides to produce. So try to give the right answer of this one. This can be a little tricky but uh, this kind of question is very rare that it comes in the exam but if it comes then you can just try to try to guess okay try make intelligent guess okay I am getting A as the answer but here just see that 
here the recognizes one form is recognizing the rival forms move but in the could not in the could not in the burden there is independent moves there is no interdependence so this cannot be could not this cannot be burden edgeworth also burden told about price edgeworth also told about price chamberlain told about both output and price so it can only be stackelberg okay so the right answer is stackelberg and i will tell you all about the models in one line in one line you will understand the whole model so could not is the one that is the duopolist will decide about the amount of output and assumes that the rival will keep their output constant so he told that the output will keep the rivals keep will keep their output constant and these three did not take into account the interdependence they did not take into account the interdependence they said we are independent we do not need to take into account the interdependence and could not told about output the rivals keeping their output constant burton said that the rivals will keep their price constant edgeworth also said that the rivals will keep their price constant but he said that see in the burton the burton said that the producers can produce how much they want they can even cover the whole market's demand but edgeworth said that is not realistic a single firm cannot control all of the demand of all of the market so he said that the duopolist will decide about the amount of price and assumes the rivals will keep their price constant and they will only produce a part of the market and not not the whole demand of the market okay and here in edgeworth there is a disequilibrium there is perpetual disequilibrium and price oscillating there is never equilibrium it is always disequilibrium but in could not and burton they came into equilibrium the firms came into equilibrium okay and here of could not is talking about output without interdependence okay burton is talking about price without interdependence next is the chamberlain he told about maximum joint profits without coming into a cartel and he told about output and price determination that both are being determined not only one then swizy told about the king to demand curve then stackelberg was the one that said that output is the rival firm the output is being seen but there is interdependence he told about interdependence chamberlain also told about interdependence and he also told about interdependence that the firms take into account the moves of the rival firms the output of the rival firms that how the rival firms output is going to change so stackelberg is different from the could not because in could not interdependence is not taken into account the rival firms output is constant but here the rival firms output can change and output can be decided by the rival also so i hope now you have understood all of the models of the um, could about the oligopoly model see you can just read it once and it will be very clear to you could not said that the output the rival firms will keep their output constant okay the burton said the the rival firms will keep their price constant edgeworth said that the the other firms will keep their price constant and we will never they will never reach a equilibrium they will never reach a equilibrium but they both said that they can the rival firms can keep uh, can reach the equilibrium but they never took interdependence into account and in oligopoly there are few firms only and they are interdependent okay chamberlain said output price both are determined maximum joint profits are there stable equilibrium is there stackelberg said output is being determined and interdependence is there so next is the sales maximization model assumes that imperfectly competitive firms will produce a level of, of output where so where can the sales maximization ha happen you know that profit maximization happens at mr equal to mc where the mc is cutting the mr from below but where the sales maximization can happen that you have to tell okay so try to give the right answer of this one and karan has said b and that is not right because this is the point of profit maximization there are three kinds of maximization profit maximization sales maximization or revenue maximization so these three have different uh, answers everyone is saying b and that is not the right answer okay i have started getting the answer d and that is also not the right answer okay shubham has said c and that is the right not 
is still not the right answer. The right answer is AR equal to AC. So I will tell you in brief about the sales maximization. That is where the AR is equal to ATC. Where the ATC is equal to AR because at that point highest level of production will be done. Because your cost is equal to your per unit cost is equal to your per unit revenue. You cannot produce more than that because after that your per unit cost will be higher than your per unit revenue. So you will produce where the AR is equal to ATC and uh, profit maximization is where the MR is equal to MC and your revenue maximization. Revenue maximization is where your MR is equal to zero. Where your MR is equal to zero at that point your revenue is maximum. Because MR is equal to zero means the total revenue is at the highest. The MR it was decreasing but the total revenue was increasing. But when it is at zero level the total revenue is at the highest level and after that it decreases. So the total revenue increases okay but when MR is zero total revenue is highest. So the revenue maximization so the revenue maximization will be equal to MR equal to zero where they are earning some profits. They should earn some profits also. Okay, so I hope you have understood the three uh, points about the sales maximization, um, about the cost, uh, the revenue maximization and the profit maximization. Just remember the one liners, one points. Sales maximization, revenue maximization and the profit maximization. So the next question is, yes, thank you Nikhil. And what will be the value of multiplier if marginal propensity to save is this and marginal propensity to import is this? So you have to tell the right answer of this one. Try to give the right answer of this one. Vijay, see uh, what happens that when there are complements. Complements move in inverse direction. When the prices are rising, the demand of the other good will decrease. And when the price of X is rising, the demand of X will decrease. And when the price of X is decreasing, then the demand of X will, uh, Y will increase. Why? Why does this happen? Because see, when the petrol prices are decreasing, the car demand will increase. So that's what complements are. And in that question, the inverse thing was there. Because the uh, price was decreasing of apples and the right was shift in the demand of the oranges were there. Due to that, demand was increases of the increasing of the oranges. I hope now you understood. Otherwise, ask again. Okay. So now I'm getting the answer. And Vinay has said A, Naveen has said A, Sarita has said A and this is not the right answer, the right answer is B. So I will solve for you very easy. What happens? What is the multiplier? Multiplier shows you that 1 upon MPS. This is what the formula of multiplier is. Now MPS is what? It is a leakage from the economy. It is a leakage from the economy. The imports are also the leakage from the economy because the money is not spent in the economy. So you will just do 1 upon MPS plus MPM. The exports you will also add and then it will be 1 upon 0 0.6 and that will be the right answer. 1.66 will be the right answer. So yes, Avinash Anil, Avinash Shubham has said the right answer. Vivek has also said the right answer. That is B. So what you need to do that for the multiplier, just add the leakages. Just add the leakages. Okay. Or you can do 1 minus MPC and you can add the leakage. Because 1 minus MPC is also the leakage. So now you know the leakage is when you are, uh, your money is not going to circulate in the economy. It is going out of the economy or it is being stock up. So saving is what? It is the stock up. It is not rotating in the economy for consumption. The imports you are importing. So you are not spending your money in the country. So it is again the leakage. I hope you have understood. Uh, why we add import? We are not adding import. We are adding marginal propensity to import. That is how much you are importing, how much money you are giving for the imports. So that we have to add here because we need to see that how much leakage is from the multiplier. Like your income was 100 but you spent, you saved 20 rupees and you imported for 20 rupees. So this 40 rupees is not going in the economy for the circulation. Only 60 rupees you have consumed in the economy. This 60 rupees is the income of some other person and he will spend. Otherwise, this 20 rupees that you have imported, if you have given here, so this 80 rupees would have been the income of your country, your country's person. So that's why we are deducting this, uh, we are uh, putting it down. Okay.
okay mp s and mp i we are putting it down v yes if there is any other type of leakage that is given that you can add but it should be marginal propensity not the whole amount absolute amount it should be the marginal propensity that you have to write okay mp s mp i so this can be the extreme level of question that can come yes because there are so many questions and i have to finish them fast okay yes navin is saying right it doesn't come under the consumption cycle and that's why we do not uh, we write it under the leakage mps is the leakage okay that's why multiplier is negative with the leakage and that's why mpi is also the leakage and that's why negatively related next question is long run equilibrium of the monopolistic competitive firm will be at what at what point the monopolistic competitive firm will be at the long run equilibrium mark the key words in the question and you will get the right answer by seeing the question only okay ratna see when in the first question uh, what was the first question can you ask the question and i will try to give the right answer of that question see in the first question the question was about the perfect competition so in the perfect competition price is equal to lac in the long run the uh, ls the ac is at the minimum so these both points are right and the other points are also right so in the first one the all of the above was the right answer okay i am getting the answer here a okay karan anuradha they are seeing same d and d is the right answer because see in the monopolistic competition in the monopolistic competition what happens that in the long run in the long run you are earning normal profits you are earning normal profits and i have told you in the perfect competition also normal profits are here when the ar is equal to average cost when the average revenue is at the equal to average cost then you are earning normal profits okay so, and mr is equal to mc mr is equal to mc so you are at the profit maximization point and your average cost is touching is touching the ar ar equal to ac so normal profit and let me tell you that why perfect competition is called utopian world because in the perfect competition ac is at the minimum but here you can see the average cost is at minimum here it is not at minimum here so in the other competition the average cost is not at the minimum okay so this cannot be the right answer uh, minimum atc is not there in the monopolistic competition but yes normal profits are there and that's why ar equal to ac next question is the greater the elasticity of supply the greater is what so we have got such kind of question in the phase 1 and this is a further version of that question i know that you will be able to answer the right answer of this question so try this one okay karan has given the right answer and he is saying a and that is the right answer okay so greater the elasticity of supply that means that the supply can change easily if the burden is to fall on the suppliers what will he do he will say i i will not produce i will stop producing why should i produce when uh, i have to bear the most of the price and i have to bear the most of the tax and my profits are reducing i will not produce so he will throw the incidence of the tax the final the final burden of the tax will be thrown on the buyers which have less elastic demands okay the greater the elasticity of supply means that the demand is less elastic and that's why the final burden will be borne by the buyers or the buyers will not get the product because the sellers will say i they won't produce because it is very easy for them to stop production for them to decrease the uh, decrease the supply or increase the supply it is very easy for them okay so when the supply is more elastic than the demand buyers bear most of the tax burden when the demand is more elastic than supply the consumers will say we won't purchase at higher prices so the supplier have to bond the cost the supplier have to bond the tax okay now i hope you have understood next question is for a single price monopoly marginal revenue is what when demand is elastic and is what when demand is inelastic this is a little typical question but let me tell you a hint ar is equal to demand this is the demand curve this is the marginal revenue curve 
at the demand curve you can see the elasticity at each and every point okay so here it is uh, elasticity is equal to 1 here the elasticity is equal is uh, greater than 1 above is greater than 1 below is elasticity is less than 1 here the elasticity is equal to 0 here the elasticity is infinity so you have to tell that marginal revenue is dash when demand is elastic demand is elastic means at this place at this place what is the mr okay it is positive is it, it is negative okay i am getting the answer and people are saying right you people vinay mahek has said the right answer that it is positive when the elasticity when the elasticity is greater than 1 then the mr is positive when the mr is positive okay it is positive and the total revenue is increasing total revenue is increasing when the mr is positive when the mr is 0 the elasticity is equal to 1 and the total revenue is at the highest when the elasticity is less than 1 mr is negative and total revenue is decreasing so this is the whole concept and this was an easy question but you just need to remember okay that at what elasticity what is the marginal revenue positive negative or zero next question is with the constant price with the constant price what will be the effect of increase in income on the demand of the normal goods so you have very easy question price is constant income is changing what will be the effect on the demand you can easily answer this question i know Okay, and Karan has already answered the question and he has answered the question A. So, is it the right answer? I hope that you all know now that yes, this is the right answer. That demand curve will shift rightwards, increasing the demand. So, well done Karan, you, you are on fire. You are giving all the right answers. And Nikhil, even Nikhil, Balaji, Nidish, they have given the right answer. Sunil, uh, Manan. But let me see that how fast you can answer also because there will be numericals in the paper and you will have to answer very fast. So, give the answers very fast, okay? So, when the income increases, at the constant price, the demand will increase. With the increase in income, the demand of the normal good will increase. So, this shows you the shift. The moment is when, the moment is when the price is changing. When the price is changing and the shift is when, when the price is constant and everything else is changing. Like income, like the taste and preferences and every other thing. So, this is the shift and the moment is when the price is changing. Okay. Next question is, in the classical framework, as long as real wages is more than the full employment equilibrium level, real wages will continue to what? It will increase or decrease. With the demand of labor dash, then supply of labor. If the, uh, if the wages are higher than full employment, so the demand will be higher or lesser than the supply of labor. That you have to answer. If you think logically, very easy to answer. So try to give the right answer of this one and... We will do it fast because so much time has passed and we are only at 20 question, 20th question. We have to do the questions faster now. So I have got the right, I have got the answer and he is saying increase. Okay, Mehek is saying B and that is not the right answer. Debajani is saying C and C is the, okay, C is the right answer. So now we will see that why C is the right answer because C. When the as long as wages is more than full employment, wages are more than full employment. So full employment is here where, where the demand is equal to supply. There is the full employment, there is the equilibrium level. So if the wages are higher than that, that means that the supply of labor will be higher than the demand of labor. Supply of labor is high because I want to provide my services because the wages are high, but the firms will not want to hire. That why they will hire me at higher wages. So, the wages will decrease because the supply is greater than demand. So, the wages will decrease. So, the real wages will show a declining trend when they are higher than the uh, full employment level. Okay. So, you have to remember, you have to think logically and you will easily be able to answer this question. And classicals. In classicals, how is this happening? Because of the wage flexibility. Because of the wage price flexibility, the wages can easily change and then the equilibrium will come at this point when the wages decrease and the demand will be equal to supply. There will be 75 questions. So now try to give the right answer of this question. See, this kind of question is a numerical based question. There is less hope for such kind of question to come. But this question is important because it is giving you, it is giving you the insight into the formula. You will, 
remember the formula for all as well as it has some components that are very uh, like important for you to understand so try to give the right answer of this one and let me tell you that from each and every formula the national income is same okay whichever formula you use the national income will be same from the income expen uh, from the income method the expenditure method and the value added method so try to give the right answer of this one Okay, so let, let me start with the income method that is the compensation of employees comes under the income method. The profits, rent, interest, mixed income of self-employed, this comes under the, in, uh, the income method. And what does income method calculate? NDPFC. NDPFC is the one that income method calculate. And CA Keshav has given the answer that is C. Okay, Debajani, Vanshika is saying A and your people are right. It is a. So this is the right answer. A is the right answer. And why I said that this one is important because in the question you must have seen net domestic capital formation. Now in the formula of consumption, in the formula of expenditure method, in the formula of expenditure method, what you do? Consumption, you add government final consumption expenditure, you add, you add the private final consumption expenditure and you add gross domestic capital formation. But the gross domestic capital formation is not here now. So how you will be able to calculate? Then you have to just add the net domestic capital formation plus the depreciation. This is the depreciation. And when you add the net with the depreciation, then you get the gross. When you add net with the depreciation, you get the gross. And that's why I brought this question because this is very important for you to understand. If it is only given as this, you can add the depreciation and you will get the answer. Okay. And in the, in the uh, expenditure method, you get GDP MP from the formula. In the income method, you get NDP FC from the formula. So, this also you have to remember. In the value added method, you get GDP MP from the formula of value of output and minus intermediate consumption. Okay. So, now we can move to the other question. Which of the following statements is or are correct about the consumption and saving as per the Keynesian Theory. So try to give the right answer of this one. If you are having any problem in the calculation, you can check it again and you will get the both the answers will be equal only. Okay, that should be the right uh, criteria that for the national income expenditure method, income method and the value added method should give the right equal uh, amount. Okay. Okay. I am getting the right answer from all of you. That is all of the above. Autonomous consumption. The autonomous consumption. This is the autonomous consumption means that at zero level of income, how much you are consuming. You still need some consumption for the expenditure, I can say. For the uh, survival, I can say. So, this is the autonomous consumption and this is the negative autonomous saving. That at zero level of income, how much you will save? You will negative save because you are consuming. So, you are consuming from your past savings. When your consumption is greater than income means your saving is negative. That is, you are dis-saving. When your consumption is equal to income, that means your saving is equal to zero. When your consumption is, your income is greater than consumption, that means your saving is greater than consumption, your saving is positive. So you have to remember saving is negative when the consumption is greater, your saving is positive when your income is greater and the autonomous consumption is negative. Like autonomous consumption is from where you are consuming, from where you are consuming extra by your past savings. So that is autonomous saving is also that just in negative. Okay. So now Coming to the next question, which of the following statement is incorrect regarding Keynesian average propensity to consume and marginal propensity to consume in the linear consumption function? Okay, so try to give the right answer of this one. Okay, so ABC can be more than one, but MBC cannot. 
MVC is constant if we are talking about the linear consumption function. I hope you know about this one. APC falls with increase in income. APC plus APS is equal to 1 and MPC is... Okay, you people are answering D. And yes, that is the right answer. We had to answer what is the incorrect statement. And many of you are answering D and that is right. C, MPC plus MPS is always equal to 1. APC plus APS is always equal to 1. So this is not right. This one is not right now. So that's why D is the incorrect. You can read all of this that MPC is more than 1. It can be equal to 1. It can be less than 1. It, it continues to fall. In the Keynes one, it continues to fall. APC continues to fall with increase in income. Next question is classical believed that the equilibrium between savings and investment is brought by the which? So according to classicals, the saving and investment is equal where? started getting the right answer and that is the right answer according to Keynes marginal efficiency to capital of capital and interest rate were the ones due to which the investment was changing these both um, on these both the investment depends on okay but we are asking about classical so classical only believed in interest rate that interest rate brings the equilibrium between the saving and the investment okay and the uh, Keynes this is the Keynes one Keynes believed that the investment is autonomous. The investment is autonomous as it does not depend on the level of income and it depends on the level of investment interest rate and it depends on the level of marginal efficiency of capital. So that's why there is a horizontal investment that it does not, investment does not depend on the income. So this is the Keynes one and this is the classical one. So here you can see both of them. Okay. Next question is, the recognition of dash provides the rational for the selling expenses incurred by the firm as per Chamberlain theory of monopolistic competition. Do not think about the theory, just think about the question and the question itself answers, uh, give, provides you the answer. So try to give the right answer of this one. If there is any confusion, if there is any trouble, just ask. Okay, just ask the question and I am here to provide you with the answers. Okay. So I have got the right answers and many of you are saying B, Karan, Anupma, Radha, well done you guys, you people are doing so great and product differentiation is the right answer. So well done you guys, that selling cost, why are you advertising, why are you doing the home to home sale, because your product is different and you want to show the world that your product is different, okay. So this is, this happens mostly in the monopolistic competition, it can happen in the oligopoly competition also. Because in oligopoly competition, if it is homogeneous goods, then you do not have to do the selling uh, expenses. But if you have the product differentiation, then you have to show the world that how your product is different. How Santur is different from Lux. How Tata is different from some other brand. Next question is, what is the shape of the classical aggregate supply due to which only prices change and the output remain constant if there is any shift in the long run? So this is the very right, very easy question I can say. You just have to see the keywords of classical of the long run. And if you see the uh, keywords, yes, Karan has given the answer that is vertical. That in the, in the long run, the classical aggregate supply is vertical and that is, it is at the full employment level and this is the aggregate demand. This is the aggregate supply. Any change will come in the prices, but no change will come in the output. Okay. Yes, everyone else is giving the right answer and now moving to the next question, which of the following equations is correct regarding the equilibrium in Keynesian cross? So I try to bring all of the new questions, a few like two, three questions will be repeated, which I found very important for you to do it again. Otherwise, all the questions are new and you need to revise them. Okay, so which of the following equation is correct? And I've got the answer from Karan again. Anyone else wants to answer? Okay, Karan is saying E. So anyone else can give me the other answer. Rishab is saying E. Vanshika is saying E. Everyone is saying E. And that is the right answer. In the Keynesian cross, what happens? That the aggregate supply or we can say income is equal to aggregate demand. Income is equal to uh, aggregate demand. That is the consumption. This is the con this is showing the consumption. Okay, autonomous consumption plus MPC into my uh, income. 
investment, uh, the government expenditure net. And I have told you that in the Keynesian, the saving is equal to the saving is equal to investment. This is investment that is autonomous investment. This is the saving. So saving is equal to investment in the uh, Keynesian also. As well as you can see that the aggregate amount equal to C plus I, income is equal to C plus S, C, C cross, and saving is equal to investment. Y is equal to AD. So all of the above is the right answer. And next question is which of the following statements is or are correct in context of the accelerator theory? So try to give the right answer. If you know the assumptions of the accelerator theory, very easy to answer. If you do not know the assumptions, try to look, like put a little logic and you will be able to give the right answer. So there is no excess capacity in the consumer goods forms. There is elastic credit supply in the economy. The capital output ratio is con uh, constant. There is excess capacity in investment or capital goods forms or units. <laughs> I also want to ask the same question from Karan that how is he seeing the next question he is answering so fast. Oh my goodness. No, no, these questions are new. I have made it myself yesterday and today only. So these questions are absolutely uh, new, I can say. So try to answer this one. Yes, okay. This is, E is not the right answer. Okay, we are asking correct. Okay, all of the above is the right answer. See, there is no excess capacity in the consumer goods or farms. Because why they will, they invest when they have excess capacity, when they have machines and all. So there should be no excess capacity, then only they will ask for machinery, then only they will ask for all the inputs, okay. There should be elastic credit supply. Credit should be flowing in the, in the country. Then only they can invest. They will take the loans and then they will invest. So capital output ratio should be constant. And there should be excess capacity in the investment or capital goods forms. Okay, excess capacity means that uh, machinery should be producing. Capital goods should have the excess capacity to only then investment can happen. Now when the investment uh, forms have the capacity to produce the new machinery. If they are not able to produce the new machinery, what will the consumer goods form will do? Only the prices will rise and not the output. So this is the assumption that you can read. Next is what should be the decrease in income if there is an increase in the taxes by 20 and MPC is 0 0.8. So try to give the right answer of this one. Very easy. I have told in the previous session also the formula of the tax multiplier. You can use that formula and you can answer the question very easily. Maybe he is faster in economics, but maybe, see, you all have some strengths, I can say. So, just believe in yourself. If you are giving the right answer now, how much, like, if you are taking more, 10 seconds more, that doesn't matter. Just you have to be, like, accurate. If you are putting too much of time and you are not accurate, that is also not good. But if you are putting less time, but you are being accurate, that is good. So, do not focus on being very fast. Focus on fast as well as accurate, okay? Okay. So try to give the right answer of this one. Okay, I'm getting the answer A from Aminash, Shubham, Arnab, and they are saying 80. So it is decrease in income. Yes, please everyone focus here, otherwise I will also lose my focus. So decrease in income if there is an increase in the taxes by 20. So the change in tax is 20. The multiplier is the C, the tax multiplier formula is minus B upon 1 minus B. That is MPC upon 1 minus MPC. So MPC is how much? 0 0.8. 1 minus MPC is 0 0.2. So, and this is multiplied. So you will get the change in income. Okay. Why we are taking negative? Because decrease in income means, uh, increase in tax means, the consumption will decrease, the income will decrease. And that's why we are taking negative MPC instead of positive MPC. So when tax multiplier is there and there is an increase in lump sum tax, you take minus and if there is decrease in tax, you take plus. Because decrease in tax means your consumption is increasing. So change in income, change in taxes, change in income, change in taxes equal to 1 uh, minus B, 1 minus B and change in T will come there. Then you can calculate the income. Change in T into this whole will come. Okay. So this proportional tax have this formula. 
वन अपॉन वन माइनस बी प्लस बी टी दिस टी इज द प्रोपोर्शनल टैक्स परसेंटेज टैक्स ओके लमसम टैक्स इज द होल अमाउंट लाइक फ्रॉम योर थाउजेंड इनकम हंड्रेड रुपीज विल बी टेकन बट टी इज प्रोपोर्शनल लाइक योर फ्रॉम योर थाउजेंड इनकम वन परसेंट विल बी टेकन गवर्नमेंट मल्टीप्लायर इज वन अपॉन वन माइनस बी इन्वेस्टमेंट मल्टीप्लायर इज वन अपॉन वन माइनस बी सो रिमेम्बर द मल्टीप्लायर फॉर्मुला दैट सेट नेक्स्ट इज विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज द करेक्ट फॉर्मुला ऑफ द एक्सलेटर प्रिंसिपल सो गिव मी द करेक्ट फॉर्मुला ऑफ द एक्सलेटर प्रिंसिपल वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन ट्राई टू गिव द राइट आंसर ऑफ दिस वर्ड ओके आई हैव गॉट द राइट आंसर दैट इज ए i equal to v into change in income and that is the right answer vanshika is also saying the right answer nitish has also said the right answer karan has also said the right answer that is your investment is equal to v is what capital output ratio into change in income see what happens that your uh, if it is it is only given k if it is given change in k that this would have also been the right answer because capital stock is what capital stock is changing from the past time you are investing so you are putting more capital so this is v is capital output ratio and that is constant taken constant change in income investment is usually happening there is no change in investment there is a investment that is happening this year only we can say change in capital stock but if in the exam it is given change in income that also can be right but you have to focus more on the question okay so next question is how is a persons likelihood to save related to the keynesian multiplier this is a application based question and this kind of questions can be asked so please focus more and try to give the right answer of this one okay i have i am getting the answer a Okay, Vanshika, Shubham, uh, Chirag are saying C, and that is the right answer. The decrease in the marginal propensity to save will increase the multiplier. See, one upon MPS. So if the and this is equal to multiplier. So if the MPS is decreasing, then the multiplier will increase. I told you na MPS, MPI, marginal propensity to import. These all are what? These all are leakages. So when the leakages will decrease, the multiplier will increase, the consumption will increase, and the uh, income will increase due to that. So C is the right answer. Yes, Naveen, well done, and everyone, well done. That MPS increases, the multiplier effect will decrease. If the leakages are more, then the consumption will be reduced. If the consumption is reduced, the income of other people is reduced. Next question is which of the following is or are the criticism of the multiplier effect? Very easy to answer. Multiplier effect, you know, then you will know that. What are the criticisms also? Okay, I get got the answer from Nilesh and Vanshika, Karan. Okay, all of the above they are saying, and that is the right answer. See. Uh, the Keynesian believed that in the multiplier effect, consumption is the function of income alone. That is not always there. The tastes and preferences are also there. There are many other factors also that is involved when consumption is taken. Instantaneous relationship without time lag. See, in the real life, time lags are there. But in the multiplier effect, it is believed that it is instant. That everything is happening instantly. Consumption is increasing, income is increasing, output is increasing. No, it takes time. so time lags are there and the multiplier didn't take time lags constant mpc they believed in the linear function and that's why they didn't believe in the uh, changing mpc but mpc is changing also in the real life ignoring effects of induced consumption on induced investment they see this is accelerator accelerator tells you na that when your consumption is changing your income is changing and income is changing your investment is also changing but multiplier didn't believe in that the keys didn't believe in accelerator theory so next is 
an increase in autonomous government expenditure will shift the aggregate demand or aggregate expenditure to where an output will happen. What will happen to the output? Very easy question. I know you can answer this questions easily. See, all of the above answers are yes. I can say that where the assumptions you have to remember so that you can keep those assumptions into your mind and you can easily remember it in the exam. So, I am giving you some of the questions where assumptions are there, where criticism are there, where I cater to all of the criticism, all of the assumptions for your exam. Okay. So, here people are answering A and that is the right answer. Yes, Panchika, thank you so much. If your concepts are getting clear, that is my main motive and that is the main objective and you people are answering the right answer, that is A. Uh, when your autonomous government expenditure, autonomous government expenditure is increasing, your aggregate demand curve will shift upwards because aggregate expenditure is equal to investment is equal to consumption, government expenditure, exports minus imports. So, it will shift upwards because the government expenditure has increased and when it shifts upward, the income increases. Okay. Next is cross elasticity of demand is dash. When two goods are not related to each other and the shape of demand curve will be dash when price of Y is taken on the y axis and the quantity of x is taken on the x axis. So, try to give the right answer of this one. Here, you do not have to draw two diagrams. In one diagram, you have to tell about two commodities. So, try to give the right answer of this one. Okay, 34 and B, Nilesh and Karan, you both are right. That is the right answer that when two goods are not related, there will be no cross elasticity. There will be zero cross elasticity and the curve will be vertical because the quantity of X do not depend upon the price of Y. Like the quantity of car depend upon the price of petrol. The So, like such relation is not here. The quantity of X is not related to price of Y and that's why it is vertical. In the complementary goods, in the complementary goods, there is negative relation. When the price of uh, complement good is uh, decreasing, the demand for the other complement is increasing. When the price of petrol is decreasing, the demand for car will increase. The positive relation in between substitutes, when the price of coke is increasing, the demand for uh, Pepsi will increase. You will say, why should I buy uh, like more, why should I give more price for the Coke when I can just buy Pepsi at lesser price? So, the demand for Pepsi will increase. Next question and this is the formula of the cross elasticity of demand. Percentage change in quantity demanded of X upon percentage change in price of Y. Okay. And next question is which of the following curves will shift upwards with an increase in the autonomous consumption? So, which of these curves will shift upward? When the autonomous consumption is changing, try to give the right answer of this one. Yes, if, rela if related, it can be positive, it can be negative. If they are perfect substitutes, then it will be infinity. If they are perfect substitutes, then the cross elasticity, cross elasticity will be infinity. Remember this also. That because they can change one good for another very easily. Okay, I am getting here mixed answers. Some are saying A, some are saying E and Naveen has said the right answer, Nitish has said the right answer, it is A and B both. So, when the autonomous consumption will increase, what will happen that the aggregate demand will shift upwards and due to that, the IS curve will also shift upward because at the same uh, interest level, the income will increase. Okay, so IS curve will shift upward as well as the aggregate demand curve is also shifting upward. So, both of them are shifting upward. So, you can see that interest rate changes the investment if interest is going down investment will go up and when the interest rate investment increases the curve shifts upward and when the curve shifts upward with the decreasing interest rate the investment is increasing this is the movement in the is curve this is the movement in the is curve but shift will come when not due to interest rate, due to autonomous reasons, due to autonomous consumption, autonomous government expenditure, autonomous investment due to autonomous reasons and not because of interest rate. Constant interest rate and increase in income. Then the shift will happen. Then the movement will not happen. Next question is what will be the effect of shift in the money demand due to the increase in income on the LM car? So try to give the right answer of this one. Ma'am, your today's session is just appreciable. Thank you so much, Mehek. I hope 
you will do very good in exam you all are doing really good and i hope all the best to all of you so try to give the right answer of this one now i started getting the answer that is b so shubham and narmathan okay navin is saying b quality questions thank you so much narmathan so what will be the effect of shift in the money demand due to increase in income so there should be shift are you people sure are you people really sure that there should be shift debajani is saying c okay and let me tell you that only debajani is the one and himanshu are the one are the ones that are thinking about movement so why are you people doing the shift there should be movement see what is happening that increase in income when the income increases when the income increases demand curve shifts upward when the income increases you will have more money for the transaction demand you will have more money for the transaction demand for money and so demand for money will shift upwards and when the demand for money shifting upwards with the increase in income the interest rate is also increasing so there is movement movement in income and movement in ln curve showing increase in the interest rate so c is the right answer that when your income is increasing the demand curve is shifting upwards demand curve is shifting upwards and due to that your interest rate is increasing so only two three people have given the right answer you have to be very careful when it comes to shift and movement the shift will be due to the these factors when these factors are involved when these variables are involved when due to the endogenous variables when due to x axis and y axis changes are happening then the movement will be there due to exogenous factors due to some other factors changes is happening then the movement will be there sorry shift will be there next question is what will be the effect of expansionary fiscal policy on income in the islm model yes 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 navin well done exogenous variable movement and endogenous variable means x axis and y axis variables then there will be you are saying opposite navin exogenous variables will cause shift endogenous variables means endo means inside the model inside the model x and y inside the model movement exogenous outer uh, variables uh, will cause shift okay i am getting mixed answers someone is saying b and others are saying c so increase in income and less than the government multiplier well done you guys this is the right answer of this one and c in the keynes in the keynesian model what happened that when your government expenditure is increasing when anything is increasing your ad curve is shifting upwards your income increases your income increases by multiplier effect okay by multiplier effect your income is increasing but in the islm model what happens that when your uh, is curve shifts upward due to any reason due to autonomous government expenditure due to expansionary policy the government expenditure has increased the taxes have reduced the consumption autonomous consumption has increased is curve will shift upwards when the is curve shifts upward the income increases but the income is not increases by this much income is not increasing by full multiplier effect because with the increase in income with the increase in income the in the demand for money is increasing the demand for money is increasing due to that the interest rate will increase and when the interest rate increases the investment reduces when the investment reduces this much increase will not come in the income the income will be increasing but less than the multiplier effect so the right answer will be less than the multi income will increase but less than the multiplier effect so i hope that you understand this now that in the islm model if this is there then the crowding out effect will be there due to the increase in the interest rate the income will not be able to uh, increase to the full multiplier it will reduce it will increase to half your incomplete multiplier in the keynesian full multiplier is there the income is increasing by full multiplier the income is increasing by full multiplier but here the income is not able to increase by the full multiplier next question is there what will be the effect of expansionary fiscal policy if lm curve is vertical that you have to tell now <laughs> please explain again okay see in the keynesian cross the in interest rate was not a endogenous variable it was not in the model it was not in the diagram so what happened that when the government expenditure increased when the government expenditure yeah investment expenditure autonomous investment increased 
then the income increased by the full multiplier. Okay, that if multiplier is 4, so the income is increasing 4 times. But here in the ISL model, when the IS is shifting upwards, when the IS is shifting upwards due to aggregate demand, the interest rate is also increasing. When the income is increasing, demand for money is increasing, interest rate will increase. And due to the increase in the interest rate, the income cannot increase to too much. When the interest rate increases, the investment decreases. And when the investment decreases, the income will decrease. So the income is not increasing by this much. Income is increasing only by less than the full multiplier effect. So the next question is this one. I hope now you are able to understand the previous one that when the IS curve, IS curve and LM curve, when the IS is shifting upwards, the income is increasing, but income is not increasing to this much. This is the full multiplier. With the change in government, this is the full. If the income would have changed to this much, this is the full multiplier effect. But the interest is also increasing, so the income is increasing, but less it is increasing. So now I've got the answers for, uh, that is inter increase in interest rate, no change in income and that is the right answer. When the LM curve is vertical, what happens that your expansion, like the expansionary policy, the aggregate demand is increasing because the government expenditure has increased, aggregate demand will shift upwards and with that the IS curve will shift upwards but here the income is same because the LM curve is upward is vertical and so there will be no change in the income, there will be only change in the interest rate. So next question is, if with the infinite interest elasticity of demand, the LM curve will be dash and there will be dash effect on the income which shift in the IS curve. So try to give the right answer of this one. Okay, so horizontal, see, infinite interest elasticity, I told you that when there is infinite interest elasticity, the curve will be horizontal. So, LM curve will be horizontal and then what is happening, IS curve is shifting. So, IS curve is shifting. So, there will be full multiplier effect. Complete multiplier effect will be there. So, there will be full complete multiplier effect. There will be complete multiplier effect because here the interest rate is not increasing. When the interest rate is not increasing, then the income will have full multiplier effect. Then the income will have full multiplier effect. Okay. So, that's why here there is with the horizontal LM curve, when there is no crowding out effect, expansionary fiscal policy has maximum effect on the natural income. Okay. That is full multiplier effect. If interest elasticity of investment is zero, the dash curve will be vertical and expansionary monetary policy will have dash effect on the income. So first of all, interest elasticity of investment. Usually we are talking about interest elasticity of demand for money and that's why uh, you say about the LM curve. But here we are talking about interest elasticity of investment. So what it will affect, which curve it will affect. Okay, so I am getting answer IS, IS and no change, LM and complete. So, first of all, Nilesh has said the, uh, Karan has said the right answer and Vanshika has also said the right answer. That is C. Interest elasticity of investment and size of multiplier. These are the two things on which IS curve depends. So, the IS curve will have, zero means vertical, IS curve will be vertical. So, the vertical it will be vertical and expansionary monetary policy means LM curve, sorry, LM curve will be this, LM curve, if monetary policy is, if expansionary monetary policy is there, that means money supply is increasing, that means money supply is increasing and when the money supply is increasing, then what happens that the LM curve shifts rightwards, okay, that is LM curve will shift rightwards and the interest rate will decrease, but there will be no effect on the income because the IS curve is vertical. So, B is the right answer. LM curve will shift because of the money supply increase and the IS curve is vertical because the interest elasticity of investment was zero. 
So the classical economics contention that prices double when the money supply doubles is predicted on the belief that in the short run velocity is dash and real GDP is dash. That, so this I can tell that this is based on the quantity theory of money. Now I hope you will be easily able to answer this question. Very easy question. I started getting the answer and constant is the right answer that velocity of money and velocity and the income should be constant because full employment is there so income and velocity is constant and money and price are related they are directly proportional so next is if government adopts contractionary fiscal policy and decreases the government expenditure what will be the effect on the aggregate demand and the income according to the Keynesian cross so this seems like a lengthy question but the answer is very easy the like you can give it in seconds if you know the curve. Okay, I started getting the answer and C is the right answer. That if the contractionary fiscal policy is there, that means the government expenditure will reduce. Aggregate demand is equal to government expenditure consumption. So the government expenditure will reduce, the aggregate demand curve will shift downwards and the income will reduce the income will reduce so this was the right answer that the decrease in income and aggregate demand curve shifts downward next is according to liquidity preference theory the demand for money have a dash relation with income and dash relation with interest rate so you have to tell according to Keynes which um, relation is between income and demand for money and between the uh, interest rate and demand for money Okay, Akhil has said D and negative relation with income. Kanin is also saying negative relation with income. Are you people sure? I am getting all of the wrong answers. Why? Okay. Oh sorry, I was seeing C. So positive and negative. So yes, that is the D is the right answer. That is Akhil has said, Karan has said, Dinesh has said D. That is there is a positive relation with demand for money and income. That when income is increasing, that demand for money is increasing. That is the transaction demand. See, you want to hold more money to consume. You want to hold more money for transaction when your income increases. When your interest rate increases, you want to hold less money for the speculative demand for money because at higher interest rate you want to invest rather than hold the money for the speculative demand so at uh, higher interest rate there is an inverse relation like there is an inverse relationship between interest rate and the demand for money because at higher interest rate you will hold less of the money for the speculative demand for money that is a part of demand for money so next is so here you can see that the interest rate and transactions demand motive has no relation the transaction demand is related to income and income increases, transaction demand for money increases. Speculative demand for money have an inverse relation with the interest rate. When the interest rate increases, speculative demand for money reduces. Next question is, if aggregate demand is higher than current output, it would, be, it would result in what? So try to give the right answer of this one. So business firms will see, the right answer for this one will be, the business firm will cut production to keep from accumulating inventories. So what is it saying that your demand for, demand is higher than the income. Your aggregate demand, it is higher than your income. This is higher. So what will happen that the business firms will expand production to earn profits from more sale and have negative inventories. That the firms will want to produce more okay because the aggregate demand is higher so they will want to produce more and they will have negative inventories because whatever is there in the inventory they will sold out okay when the income is greater than aggregate demand then there are positive inventories because the output is greater than aggregate demand and so inventories is stocking up next question is in the market for real output the initial effect of an increase in the money supply is to dash so what should be the right answer of this one
So shift the aggregate supply curve to the right, shift the aggregate supply curve to the left. So if the market for real output, the initial effect of an increase in money supply. So if the money supply is increasing, what will happen that the aggregate demand will shift to the right. Okay, the aggregate, the aggregate demand will increase. So this will be the right answer that when the money supply is increasing that the aggregate demand will also increase. Okay, because money supply means that you have more money into your hand and you will demand more. Next is the LM curve will be flatter when there will be, so we have done this kind of question many times and that is flatter will be when the lower income elasticity for demand is there and larger interest elasticity for demand for money is there. So the right answer will be A and C. Okay, when the elasticity for demand income is low. Flatter when the income elasticity is smaller and interest elasticity is higher and steeper when the larger income elasticity is there and lower interest elasticity is there. So next question is, as per Keynes, the shift of the demand for money upwards will constant, money supply will lead to what? Okay, so for 47th, Karan has gave the answer increase in interest rate. So shift in demand for money upwards. So the demand for money is shifting upwards with constant money supply and that will increase the interest rate. So that is the right answer. That money supply is always constant and money demand is increasing upwards. So the interest rate will increase. Next question is if money demand is equal to this and money supply is equal to this, what will be the LM equation? So you have to see that LM curve shows you the equilibrium in the money market. In the money market, LM curve shows you the equilibrium. Equilibrium between what? Equilibrium between the money demand and money supply. So very easy question to answer now that um, LM equation will be where the money demand is equal to money supply. That is 0. Point, that is 0. 0.4y minus API equal to 1200. And here the income, here the interest rate is being defined. Here the interest rate is being defined because income you know, income is changing and with that Demand curve is changing and with that interest rate is being defined. Interest rate is being determined. So yes, C is the right answer. So I hope you have understood the logic. Next question is, if the interest elasticity for investment is zero, dash curve will be vertical and dash policy will have no effect on income. So try to give the right answer of this one. Okay, so elasticity for investment is zero, that is IS curve is vertical and dash policy will have no effect, that is monetary policy will have no effect, I have already told you this one, that LM curve will shift but monetary policy will have no effect. So which of the following goods is an exception of the law of demand and shows an upward sloping demand curve. Law of demand says that when your prices are increasing, your demand is decreasing. So law of demand tells you about the downward sloping curve, that when your price increases, your demand decreases okay but the there is a positive sloping demand curve and that is in which case so you people are saying d and that is the right answer in the given good case that is a low income non-luxury good in this case when the prices increase the demand for this good also increase next question is in the liquidity trap monetary policy is what so in the liquidity trap liquidity trap is when when the money supply is this much and your money demand goes horizontal when your money demand goes horizontal then there will be what effect of yes i've got the right answer of 51 that is no impact on interest rate because your liquidity trap is when money demand is this and even if money supply is changing even if the monetary policy is expansionary contractionary no effect will come on the interest rate so next question is the term national in income represents what so you just have to uh, deduct the depreciation or you have to see that how. So here GNP is there, GNP, market price is there, so you have to change in NNP, FC. So how you will changing from GNP, MP to NNP, FC? So C. 
from the gross you have to change to net and anupma is saying right that is from market price you have to change to fc so from gross national product at market price you will minus the depreciation from gross to you have to go to net and you will minus the indirect taxes also and you will add the subsidies so next question is according to the phillips curve concept inflation depends on which of the following factors in this question you should not even take 10 seconds to answer this question we have done it so many times that you should directly answer this one that Phillips curve concept depends on the expected rate of inflation, it depends on the supply shocks in the economy, deviation of the unemployment rate from the natural rate and it Phillips curve says that there is an inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment rate. When inflation is increasing, unemployment is decreasing. When inflation is decreasing, unemployment is increasing. So as well as next question is what is the difference between GDP at basic price and GDP at market price? So try to give the right answer of this one. So see, GDP at basic price, okay, this includes the production tax, this includes the production tax and GDP at market price, GDP at market price includes both the production tax as well as the product tax, as well as the product tax. So the difference between the GDP basic price and GDP market price is the product tax and product subsidies because uh, GBA at basic prices will include production taxes and exclude production subsidies. It will deduct production subsidies and GBA that is GDP at factor cost will not include any of the tax and, and it will include all of the subsidies. GDP at market price will include both production and product taxes and exclude both production and product subsidies. So you can see the difference between GBA at basic price and GDP at market price. Next question is. What will be the effect of expansionary monetary policy with a downward sloping IS curve and upward sloping ML LM curve? So here it is just saying you that there is a downward sloping IS curve and upward sloping LM curve. So what will be the effect of expansionary monetary policy? So try to answer this one. Okay, I have already got the right answer that right was shift in LM curve that when monetary policy is increasing expansionary, money supply will increase and interest rate will decrease. So here is the right answer and next question is which of the following good have an inverse and negative relation with the income. So inverse and negative relation with the income that is when your income is increasing that product will the demand of normal goods increases. The demand for normal goods increases that is when you are uh, earning more you will buy more pizzas you will buy more cars and all but when your income is increasing you will buy less of the inferior good. Okay, because that is deteriorating to your standards you can say. So you will buy less of the demand if it is inferior good. Next is here you can see luxury you will buy more basic or necessity you will buy when your income increases you will buy the necessity goods more but not that much. So the elasticity is, neg is less than 1. Okay, it is greater than 0 but less than 1. So it is inelastic you can say. So inferior good it is negative, inferior good it is negative that is downward sloping otherwise here and here it is upward sloping that when income increases the uh, demand also increases. Next is according to the ISLM model investment function is this which of the following is correct. So try to give the right answer of this one. Okay, I have got the answer from Ratna and she is saying investment is negatively related to interest rate and I is autonomous investment. So that is right that in the ISL model you have seen that investment and in interest rate and investment have a negative relation. That's why here you can see DI means that um, negative uh, DI means with the interest rate investment have a negative relation. Okay, and this is autonomous investment that doesn't depend on any of the things. So next is the slope of IS curve will be more steep when. So we have discussed this kind of question also very much and that's why I will just give you the answer. That is the slope of IS curve depends on the elasticity of investment demand with the interest rate and the size of investment multiplier. So when the elasticity is low and when the size of multiplier is small there will be steep IS curve and when there is uh, high 
elasticity high size of multiplier they will be flat i square okay next question is when the reserve bank of india announces an increase of the cash crr what does it mean so if the crr is increasing what does it mean you have to tell that very easy question try to give the right answer very fast Okay, I started getting the right answer, and that is the right answer. Commercial banks will have less money to lend because CRR has increased. The banks have to put more money with the RBI, and that's why they will have less money to lend. Less money to lend, and this usually happens when the inflation is very high. Then the CRR is increased. Money multiplier in an economy increases with the which? Okay, money multiplier is increasing in the economy. Okay, money multiplier is one that the banks. have the deposits and they they have some deposits and they give the loans and everything so it the money multiplies the money supply multiplies so it is the effect of which of the following so karan is saying b and that is the right answer increase in the banking habit of the population so people will be putting more money with the banks and that's how the banks will get more money and they can easily multiply the money money multiplier refers to the how an initial deposit can lead to bigger final increases in the total money supply if the slr is increasing crr is increasing the banks will not be able to give more loans and that's why they will not be able to create much money multiplier next question is devaluation can correct imbalance in the balance of payments or devaluation raises the price of imported goods and reduces the foreign price of exports of the devaluating country so the statement is just saying that devaluation can correct imbalance in balance of payment so devaluation what happens in devaluation that when your currency is depreciating when your currency value is decreasing then due to that the prices of imported good increases and the it reduces the prices of exports so more exports happen so the more exports happen and less imports happen and due to that what happens that our balance of payment uh, become balance or it becomes better okay so the right answer for this will be a that both a and r are true and r is the correct explanation of a because what is happening imports are decreasing and exports are increasing and that's how balance of payments are getting better next question is which of the following is a capital receipt in government budget very easy question you shouldn't take even 10 seconds to answer this one okay so what will happen okay. that dividends interest receipts dividends and profits the income tax receipts fines they are the regular payments that is happening and shubham rishabh they are saying c and that is the right answer this is the capital receipt this is the receipt that is capital receipt which is not creating any liability capital receipts are receipts that create liabilities or reduce financial assets so you are borrowing that means you are increasing your liabilities okay or you are disinvesting that means you are reducing your assets so that happens non recurring in nature they are the others one the dividends and everything they were recurring in nature so they came in the revenue receipts only the borrowing came in the capital receipt so next is according to john maynard keynes statement that government interference is needed in the economy at times which of the following can be true even if you do not know keynes this is a very simple question if you know about the fiscal policy you will easily be able to answer this question okay so i am getting the answer that is c contractionary fiscal policy during recession if the contractionary fiscal policy in recession is there then the economy won't be able to grow na in the recession there should be expansionary fiscal policy and uh, nikhil is saying akhil is saying the right answer that deficit spending should be happening when recession is there that is government what does this mean that the government should spend more that's how we can come out of the recession that's how consumption will start in uh, the production will start the income will start okay 
all of the following are variables that can be manipulated to affect fiscal policy except which of the following this is a very easy question fiscal policy is affected by the government and which of the following variable cannot be affected by the government directly so here the rate of interest is the one that is manipulated by the rbi the rbi is the one that is changing the money supply that is changing the rate of interest through the reserve ratios through the uh, rr uh, the reserve ratio and the repo rate so all of these the property taxes government spending paying pensions paying unemployment this comes under fiscal policy this comes under the government but rate of interest comes under the rbi next is monetary policy is accommodating when in the course of fiscal expansion the money supply is dashed to prevent interest rate from dash so what is happening that when fiscal expansion happens that is government is spending more when the government is spending more that means saving is happening less when the saving is happening less that means that the interest rate are rising to stop the interest rate from rising what will happen that the rbi will increase the money supply so the right answer will be b that you have to the rbi will have to increase the money supply so that the interest rate should not rise because if the interest rate rise investment decreases so the government the rbi do not want this so it tries to reduce the interest rate it tries to manage the interest rate and that is monetary policy is accommodating that is it is trying the fiscal expansion to take the full part so when the is curve shifts when the government expenditure is increasing the lm curve is also shifted so that at the same interest rate the income can increase with the multiplier effect with the multiplier effect full increase in the income should come next is which of the following statement is false regarding business cycle so try to give the right answer of this one very easy that trough occurs at the end of a period of contraction so that is true that when the contraction is completed at the bottom trough is there peak is the highest level of the economic activity that is true peak is the highest recession and depression both are in the contraction so first uh, recession comes and then depression comes so both comes in the contraction phase business cycles are recurrent in nature it happens again and again again and again again and again so this is also true but business cycles are periodic with specified timelines this is not true and devasni nilesh are saying the right answer that this is not true specific timelines are not there there is no specific timeline for the business cycle to come or go otherwise we would have done better in controlling the business cycle if we would have known if the phillips curve is dash in the long run in the long run phillips curve is what then an increase in the money supply from year to year will not change the unemployment rate and will dash inflation so what should be the right answer of this one very easy question directly in the keywords you can find the answer okay 67c that is the right answer that is what the phillips curve is vertical in the long run and downward sloping in the short run it tells you the inflation and the unemployment relation and in, unemployment will not change in the long run because it is at the full employment level unemployment level but inflation will increase with the money supply because with the money supply increasing demand will increase and the prices will increase so the inflation will increase next is if the demand for a good is dash or decrease in price by a firm will increase the total revenue of the producer so what will happen what is the right answer of this one that if the demand for a good is dash decrease in price by a firm will increase the total revenue of the producer so see what is happening that demand for a good if the prices are decreased the uh, demand will increase but if it is a inelastic product if it is a inelastic product then what happens that if the prices are decreasing the demand will not increase very much so it doesn't pay the firm to decrease the price so in the case of in the case of elastic what will happen that there is elastic so if a small decrease in prices come there will be huge increase in demand a small decrease in prices and that raises the total revenue okay but if the demand is inelastic at the original quantity level then should the company raise its price then it will pay the firm to raise the price and when it is elastic when the demand is elastic then you should decrease the price firm decrease the price when it is inelastic the firm should increase the price because then also they will have to buy the same amount and you will get more revenue from increased price okay 
which of the following is not under the capital account of balance of payments? Try to give the right answer of this one. Yes, unitary elastic means that the percentage change in price, the quantity demanded will be equal to the percentage change in price. So there will be no effect in the total revenue in the case of unitary elastic. Even if you decrease, means if you decrease the price, there will be no effect on the total revenue because the decrease in price is equal to increase in demand. So there will be no effect in the unitary case. So D is the right answer. Unilateral transfers are a part of the uh, cap, uh, the current account and current account includes the exports and it includes the imports, the services, the goods and the unilateral transfers. Capital account includes the investments, external borrowings, external assistance. Next question is transfer payments are a part of current account under balance of payments which of the following economics concept does not include transfer payments. So you should all know that national income is the one that should that never includes the transfer payments. It includes only the income that is being earned by the factors of our country by our uh, produce by our land by our labor by our capital and entrepreneur whatever they are earning. So national income only includes the earning concept while the others they are the receipt concepts that how much the households are receiving how much the uh, firms are receiving how much the firm households are receiving and how much the firms are receiving next is if india is facing continuous depreciation of rupees against dollars and inflation is high what will be the step taken by the rbi we are very near to the end we have just four or five questions left so try to give the answers very quick okay So see, when the depreciation is there, when the rupees is depreciating, we should sell the dollars. Because then if we sell the dollars, the supply of dollars will increase and the demand for dollars will decrease. And what will happen? That the value of dollars will re reduce and the value of rupees against dollars will increase. So we should sell the dollars. And in the case of inflation, we should buy the rupees. If we buy the rupees, if the RBI buy the rupees, less money supply will be in the economy. Less money supply will in the economy and this reduces the demand, this will reduce the inflation. Yes, RBI is doing it right, right now in the sell by swap that is happening. It is selling the dollars and it is buying the rupees. That is why the question was brought because it is currently happening. That RBI is selling the dollars, it has sold dollar 5 billions and it is buying the rupees from the banks. Next is Reserve Bank of India would do which of the following in order to expand the economy. So it will sell the bonds, it will raise the rates, it will buy the bonds, it will raise the raise of requirement. So it will try to buy the bonds. Buy the bonds means buy the government securities. It will buy the government securities, it will take the government securities from the uh, banks and it will give them the money. So that growth can happen when the money supply increases, the demand will increase. Yes, inflation can come in the economy, but when the demand increases, output will increase, income will also increase. Okay, so yes, you people are giving the right answer, buy bonds. So when the expansionary monetary policy is there, everything should be reduced. And when the contractionary monetary policy is there, every, every rate should be increased so that interest rate can increase. Next question is there, dash transactions are below the line transactions undertaken to cover the deficit or surplus of the above line transactions and we have discussed this kind of question also. This is important and you should know about the accommodating and autonomous transactions. That's why I have brought for you that autonomous payments are above the line. They are done for the profit motives. Accommodating transactions are for the accommodation of the deficit and surplus. If the deficit is happening, if the surplus is happening to accommodate that or this is the below the line items. Okay, which among the following statements is correct? This try to write, give the right answer of this one. This is the second last question. And after this, we will be at our last question. So see, in this one, minimum of AVC is at larger output than the minimum of MC. I have already told you that AVC is this. That MC cuts, MC cuts the average variable cost or MC cuts the average cost at the minimum point. At the minimum point. So marginal cost should be like marginal cost should have the minimum point at some 
before before output like and the average cost average variable cost should have the minimum at the later on period that then only the mc can cut the abc at minimum point when mc is rising this kind of questions are very rare i'm just telling you that mc is equal to mc is equal to the minimum point of the average variable cost and average cost always remember that mc is equal to the minimum point of average variable cost and average cost this is the last question if we deduct grants to states for the creation of capital assets from revenue deficit we arrive at what so thank you very much this is the last question and i know that all of you will be able to give the right answer of this one all the very 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 best for your exam i know that you people are rocking it you people are doing really great and you will do really great in the exam do not get nervous okay do your exam very good and you can do it okay remember that in the exam also if you find one or two tricky questions now do not get afraid from those okay and everyone is giving the right answer effective revenue deficit from the revenue deficit we are deducting the creation of the capital assets okay uh, we deduct the grants to states that is the grant see the grant come under the revenue expenditure revenue receipts A revenue expenditure it comes grants come under the revenue expenditure and the grants to states for the creation of capital asset is deducted from the revenue uh, deficit so that we can come to the effective revenue deficit we deduct the grants that is used for the capital expenditure for used for the capital assets so thank you very much and do understand about the arc elasticity also elasticity you know the formula that percentage change in quantity demanded upon percentage change in uh, price the arc elasticity is percentage change in quantity demanded with respect to midpoint so if quantity is changing from 20 to 30 the midpoint will be 25 okay so this is the formula of arc elasticity i brought it so that you should know about it before going to the exam and point elasticity i have already told you mid is the ed equal to one above is greater than one below is less than one so thank you very much and i hope that you enjoyed the session do tell me in the comment section that how many questions you gave right and do tell me that you enjoyed the session or not and i hope that this was informative for all of you thank you very much okay then if you have any query you can mail us here 